Hello, I am Emmanuel Huin. I'm a French dancer and choreographer. Uh, I'm 44 years old. <laughs> and I'm uh, yeah, a dancer and a choreographer. And since four years, I'm, I am directing the choreographic center of Angers, which is a place in France. There are 19 uh, choreographic centers in France, and Angers is one of those. And maybe the characteristic of it is that it is also a school uh, for choreographic dancers and people who want to become authors, choreographers. Mm -hmm. So I'm there for four years and I'm doing my own work as an artist. I'm also inviting people to do their own work. And I'm also running the school with uh, some other artists and, uh, and searchers. Mm -hmm. And there is also a big strong program, an educative program where we we, we do special things with teachers, students, universities, prisons, hospitals, and mm -hmm. many things that we could invent or that we invent with the local situation of Angers. And I was here in uh, New York, I mean here in the theater workshop to perform the last two nights solely adaptation of uh, Deborah's piece OO, Groupies, that we performed last week in St. Mark Church, so it was a very nice moment of uh, mm -hmm. touring a, an American piece with a French cast. Yeah, it's two years after, isn't two years it? After, after it was... We created, uh, it, we created it in June 06, uh -huh. yeah, that's true, almost, I mean one year and a half. And um, and now we toured it in in New York, and we're gonna play it again. We we played it in France in the Festival d'Automne and Centre Pompidou last year mm -hmm. in November, and we will perform it in Angers in April. And we waited in, until April because we wanted to be able to work to perform in circle, mm -hmm. and we expected the new theater in Angers that we're in now, mm -hmm. so that it could be in the right situation. So actually the Deborah's project is a now three years old project. Uh, actually I saw the match, I saw the Soli digested from the match in Portland, Oregon mm -hmm. in September 2004 and I was very interested in this ghost that was traveling between the three solos that I saw. I saw Wally Cardona, mm -hmm. Rose Warby, Deborah and I came the day after and I saw I think no, the same three people. But then after I saw Chris Parkinson and Rose Warby in Montpellier. And I was very interested in the thing that I was seeing people doing different things, but with the kind of same shadows behind, <laughs> and also crazy things. And, and I loved the wildness and freedom of all of them. Sense of humor is yeah, it's kind of a lot. So, and solos, you know, also, where you can really discover people. And at the same time, I understood that they were led or tracked or connected to something that was not here. So I liked uh -huh. very much that. And the day after there was a workshop with Deborah Hay that I didn't know. The only thing that I mm -hmm. knew is that I'm very interested in Judson Church period. Mm -hmm. And I studied and read quite a lot in France. I mean, the Sally Baines uh, things. <laughs> and and Trap secrets in the crew. Yeah, <laughs> and democracy's body. And yeah. uh, I watched pictures and there was this Deborah head always almost in the pictures of the Judson but mm -hmm. then after what did she become I didn't know she disappeared I mean she was in the pictures and then mm -hmm. no one and suddenly as I was invited uh, as a organizer because I was the head of Angers in Portland I went there with other French programmers so it was strange for me as a travel because mm -hmm. I'm usually not in those kind of travel and yeah. an artist <laughs> on tour or at home yeah. And then there was the opportunity to see these performances. Uh, I went one time and then I, w I went the day after, although I had thought that I would see something else, but I w really wanted to understand more. And then I went to this workshop of three hours. And then I went to this woman and said, uh, I'm mean, very interested. Uh, well, we talked and the other mm -hmm. French programmers were also impressed by this work. So I made her the proposal to come to make a group piece for our students, mm -hmm. for the students who, who came to be authors. It was a good mix in between being dancers and authors at the same time. Yeah. The, the kind of professionals yeah. and that they were doing choreography also. Yeah. 
and yeah. the this essay with Deborah was the only essay where they were a kind of a choreographer working for them with them. Otherwise, they do their own stuff mm -hmm. with some themes or context. Mm -hmm. So she did music for our essay people. Essay is the name of the formation for authors, and it was a great moment also with for those people. Some of them stay connected with her. And at the same time, we we developed uh, we developed the we started the work for OO. So she came 15 days teaching room, mm -hmm. and then we had to practice while she went away. And when she came back, she did the group piece OO, the score mm -hmm. that you could see in St. Mark Church last week. Mm -hmm. And while that, we had to go on digesting and doing our own adaptations that you saw. So it was in parallel the work of a group composition and the uh, creation of the movement yes, vocabulary or the, the work with the solo. Yeah. Usually she, d she told us. Uh, that last week, usually she does the group piece first, and sometimes there are adaptations. Mm -hmm. And this time was new that she started teaching the solo, asking us to practice, come back, make the group piece while going on adaptation adaptations. So she's thinking about how it worked or how it did not this this uh, calendar in a way. Mm -hmm. uh, the the work has been very important for me in different levels. As a dancer, it's very demanding, but, it, but demanding in a new way. Um, actually, Deborah gives scores. She hardly doesn't show. I mean, she showed some ways of doing what she was asking after a while, but mostly my interest was that she was seeing things like the score of the space and the imagination or the images that she had to let us do what she wanted us to do. We understand what score is, but can you know, because yeah. in the dance world, uh, could you explain is, a little bit what example, is a score? You are in a circle, just imagine it's an egg with mm -hmm. white, I mean, albumin and yellow. Mm -hmm. And the beginning is, is walking around, around the egg so that you just understand where you come, where you... Can be a metaphor or an instruction yeah. or so physical it, action. Yeah. So it's... A score is a succession of rules, of images, of kind of timing and, and of spacing. For example, the beginning is you walk inside the egg, you take what you need in the middle and then you go back and once you arrive on the periphery, you make a big, big salut, very... Mm -hmm. um, a big hello. Uh -huh. world, and then you start again and there are other other images like you a sorcerer and you go from this point to this point uh -huh. and then you a very very speedy sorcerer and you go from that point, to that uh -huh. point. or you will drag a burden from this point to another or you will be a quick um, a quiet alarm with boring movements you know yeah. things like this or like the time step kind of like a yeah, kick so ball change that's <laughs> the visiting to the pope oh wow you know, we're uh, visiting the Pope and suddenly we just uh, make benedictions. So <laughs> those kind of things give images, ideas, but we really, and there is another thing that she says is, there is no way it looks like. So although she gives strong images, you could do drag in your burden or make a prayer as you want. I mean, I could just lay down and someone could just be like this. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, she doesn't correct you in, in what you choose, it's more about she does, uh, the... Because she has a vision after a while, yeah. I mean, it, not after a while, she has a vision, so she gave impulses, new impulses, but in a way it's very open and in another way it's very narrow, which is quite interesting as a... It's like a paradox, yeah, yeah very a, Buddhist in a way. Yeah, and there is a third thing that I didn't say which is very important, is that we have to have in mind a question that she always uh, repeats. It's a kind of uh, advice. It's not. It's more than an advice, but it's how you should behave while dragging your burden. So the beginning is: what if every cell in your body um, tried to surrender the pattern to be in a single direction while using time and space as the tool of practice of the whole egg theory. Something like this, maybe I forgot one part. <laughs> but, you know, so you have that in your head while doing something, so 
while you are doing the sorcerer, at the same time you have to think that you should not fix anything in this sorcerer. You should not be in the pattern of being a very frontal one, or that maybe that your back is meaning something else at the same moment, and that's fine. Yeah. So there are many layers, and as a mover, it's a very strong food to have this, you know, two narrow ways of doing the practice, the questions, and the score, whatever. And it's never completely together, or yeah. So it's a kind of impossibility all the time. Uh, exotic and new layers of uh, consciousness, you know. My my last big discovery in terms of consciousness of a, as a performer was Lisa Nelson, also with scores and taking Grant the whole environment. So meeting Deborah in this was very important. And another layer for me which was uh, very rich and nurturing my own work as a choreographer is that she makes the opposition in between right, written dance and improvisation completely she dis destroys it because actually our way to improvise her score is the co is makes her choreography. Mm -hmm. Although of course she chooses the space and everything, but there is no movement that she chose, mm -hmm. and still it's really her piece. And it goes further in this strong interaction in between uh, interpretation and choreography, yeah. dance and choreography. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's very interesting because it's almost programmatic, yeah. but you have the spaces for creativity and... Freedom uh, and responsibility. Mm -hmm. so but she, she also has this commitment of rehearsal like three months intensely. Yeah, that, I, yeah. that I never succeeded to do myself, <laughs> and which is a, a kind of a challenge still, still now, because you know, for the solo adaptation, I could feel that I'm still missing some mm -hmm. practice and that I'm... Uh, sometimes trapped in old ways of behaving on stage mm -hmm. because I didn't yeah, I didn't reach this level of uh, mm -hmm. having gathered mm -hmm. enough time of practice and so I, I want to go on actually with, with this mm -hmm. one. As a choreographer it, it's, it has helped me in a way for my last piece uh, which took place in 2007 in Angers and Paris and Italy, Le Grand Dehors it's called and I found out after three months of rehearsal that I was using a similar process of uh, having a common dance, which I called in France une matrice. Mm -hmm. It was a dance that I improvised ten years ago, but which never came up in any work <laughs> before. And I chose to take it back from my own personal archives and to share it with other dancers that mm -hmm. never saw it or never danced it. So I had to relearn it through someone mm -hmm. that uh, reread it because I'm very bad and, and I'm very bored to watch my work again and to really try mm -hmm. to analyze what I did. So someone else did it mm -hmm. for, for me and for us. And that person, Matthew Doze, reteach it, retaught it to us. And we reconsidered this matrice and we did improvisation on this one trying, choosing some moments to make them bigger or to be in, interested in, in the detail of one shoulder or something. So I said after a while that this matrice was a um, projection screen where everyone could really make physical and singular points of view. And in a way I thought, God, it's not so far from this story of room that she told and that everyone could uh, could choose in the way of how to do it. So mm -hmm. I actually I found out two months after the beginning of Le Grand Nord that I was very much um, involved in, in a similar process, although it didn't start the same way. I was interested at the beginning of Le Grand Nord uh, to, to see all the dancers that I made or that people made for or during my works Mm -hmm. that never came up on the stage, that were not chosen, you know, that are what we call abandoned dancers mm -hmm. or lost dancers. Mm -hmm. But th those lost dancers, they make the work. I mean, mm -hmm. although you don't choose them, you, you don't choose them because one, another one is better or more precise for mm -hmm. you, but all what is around 
is very effective also as a work. So I wanted to see what was those left things of the last mm -hmm. 10 years, and I wanted to confront them to the political context of that period, uh, pretending that I was not really conscious, consciously of this context, but that maybe I was thinking that maybe my left dancers were had taken something from the context. So mm -hmm. this last work was very on what did come into these dancers that I didn't um, chose, and what can I learn from today watching them. Mm -hmm. actually. So uh, something that I couldn't uh, help uh, thinking is like when what happened when you watch someone else doing the same solo, you know, like a, and and about their choices or and I'm very, yeah, I'm very interested in that because it's like one imagination talking talking to another imagination. Yeah. So yesterday at Sylvain and Laurent's performance, I was very happy because I was still working but being sitting, mm -hmm. being informed about the imagination being informed about mine, about my choices and what I dropped. Mm -hmm. So it's, I think, as a performer and as a viewer, it gives very interesting food. So I, I love seeing the others performing. Mm -hmm. And actually I regret it not to have seen them before uh, performing myself because it could have give more... <laughs> so you have not mine. seen them before? You didn't... I mean, for one year. Yeah. We performed it last year in uh, okay. CND, uh -huh. National Gala Dance in Paris. But since then, I performed with Jennifer and uh, Sylvain in Porto, in, mm -hmm. Liz, in Porto in Portugal. Mm -hmm. But we didn't have the chance to perform it together again. And I performed it along mine in Munich last um, June, and I was alone. Mm -hmm. So it was strong food, and now I think I would do a different performance. It works really well when you see them together as yeah. an audience because you get the conceptual layer really clear and it has, I think, an effect of, of, of the playfulness yeah. of that. And actually, okay, with some friends came with me and it's like, the, I can't wait to see what the other person is doing. Yeah. And they are not, you know, like dance uh, mm -hmm. critics or yeah. they just love performances or theater. and. And they were really happy to say, okay, let me see what, yes. what the next person what is, is going the, to what do. What are the choices? And it also, yeah. y you wonder what was the original thing, but mm -hmm. there is no original thing. What, yeah. is, what is very yeah. interesting in this thing, yeah. you know, the thing <laughs> always yeah. goes further. Yeah. What was it? The there is a, such a great connection with the digital realm right now, mm -hmm. all the thing. And uh, post philosophy, post mm -hmm. post yeah. also. It's very, it's very strong that there is only interpretation, mm -hmm. but it doesn't mean that you are not responsible of anything, mm -hmm. you are very much, but mm -hmm. the further you go with what was the first thing, there is, I mean, mm -hmm. <laughs> it goes away. Yeah, yeah. so it's very in interesting and, and a strong statement actually from Deborah and also what you're doing is a kind of like passing, yeah. you know, passing in certain way, I always say it's like it's very Buddhist. Also, it's kind of passing the Dharma in a way. Just okay, I transmit this yeah. to you. This transmission of, of uh, not only the the form, I give you the ways in certain yeah. way to, to to face the form. Yeah. <laughs> I teach you kind of these levels yeah. with a task because he has one that is the instructions, and it was uh, the other instruction is what you can do with the instructions yeah. Yeah. that you can drop ones yeah. and. Yeah. Can you talk a little bit about that structural aspect? Yeah, the thing is, was that room is a 20 minutes, 20, 25 minutes score. And then during your adaptation, you could drop things, but you could not add things. Uh, I mean, a new section, mm -hmm. knowing that you can interpret any section like you want. You cannot do it twice either, isn't it? Or can you? No. Okay. And uh, you cannot, you have to respect the chronological way of room. Mm -hmm. So the beginning is of room is the beginning of all our solos. And the end, I mean, structural decay or falling into a hole arrives after. You cannot start by falling into a hole. Yeah. You have to start by, by what I was explaining, yeah. you know, entering the whole egg and then uh, making a, <laughs> a bend to this yeah. whole egg. So in that, you have a yeah, you have a path actually that mm. you have to follow and you can drop some moments 
I, mm -hmm. I found out yesterday that I dropped the sorcerer mm -hmm. because in the groupies I'm not doing it. But actually, when I saw Sylvain and Laurent Pichot yesterday, <laughs> Sylvain Prunonek and Laurent Pichot, I said, well, it's nice the sorcerer. Why did I drop it? And I uh, think next time I will yeah. make it come back. Yeah. You know, a Pocahontas sorcerer. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so that was the the structural way, and of course we had we could add some music, some costumes, and a title. So it's mm -hmm. also it's also making your choices. Uh, either it comes it comes on the physical choices that you made mm -hmm. after. And for me, it was a very strong guide that I made maybe too soon because I was not practicing enough. Mm -hmm. But I made the choices of this of the title and, and music and movement quite soon mm -hmm. and it helped me uh, finding ways of, of doing. Yeah. Do you think that uh, your uh, initiative of, of uh, bringing Deborah Hay to Europe and, and doing this kind of work and the sold out performances that the George Pompidou uh, have, I would say, certain impact in the rediscovery of, uh, or the discovery of uh, Deborah Hay's principles and certain things that are related with postmodern dance, mm -hmm. basic, you know, like that kind of bare stage, a certain kind of purity, but discipline, uh, low, uh, you know, not high production values, but really, very, really, really center in performance. What do you think about that? I think that it was the, I mean, the French stage was very prepared about that because it's already 10 years ago then this generation that I belong to, the choreographers, mm -hmm. um, started to be really connected with the Judson way of doing the criticism of, uh, of the dance production, how to make a radical way of uh, how make how to make art today and it and it really <laughs> goes through the digestion of Judson mm -hmm. so bringing Deborah in that situation was not so difficult because everything was prepared in a mm -hmm. way you know Yvonne Rainer came and we rebuilt a uh, continuous project Alter Daily in 97 Steve came we rebuilt a satisfying lover she, he comes often to improvise so those people, and I don't know, I, I made a 10 years interview with Trisha Brown, so there is a, there is a part of the French mm -hmm. dance which is very connected with this mm -hmm. part. But then that's true that Deborah was not there, I w was nowhere actually for a long time, I think. And uh, I think it was a very strong discovery for us because she is very special in the Judson area. I mean, mm -hmm. you cannot compare her to anyone, mm -hmm. either from the Grand Union also, so it's a very, she has a very strong in personality and work that was really worth discovering because it's a very good challenge in between moving and thinking, and, and she's a very strong mixture. And of course, for her personally, I think when she says it, uh, it, it's, it was a strong, strong impact because doing this work with the student, with us, being in France for a long time, it has been a big focus on her and I'm happy that I could help <laughs> doing that, you know. Yeah. She was just the year before in Montpellier. Jean-Paul Montanari also wanted to show her uh, because he heard about uh, Deborah revival and he was very interested like I was. He, he told me, I was also thinking, where is this woman? I mean, <laughs> she has appeared for 40 years, what did she do? Mm -hmm. And finally, because here she did the match that had a big success, mm -hmm. and that this French... Well, New York also has rediscovered her, yeah. I think, in the last seven years. And there was this fused organization, you know, in between France and the um, United States, and the French uh, attaché culturel at that point, Emmanuel de Montgazon, that really helped us to just connect and to meet. So those people, those programmers, those uh, in-between people mm -hmm. were very important also and the money that has been spent yeah. in, your, in our travels to yeah. connect and to travel was important. Would you call your uh, process improvisational in, uh, with this piece? Uh, with O-O? With O-O. Because he has you know, the idea of a structured improvisation. I think as I told you it's a very interesting 
mixture about very strong structural improvisation. Mm. So as Deborah was saying after the show in OO, there was a public discussion and she said, uh, I don't know what was the beginning of the sentence, but it was, as I think that I am a very open-minded person, but I am not, you know? So it's mm. really the same thing. The, the two things at the same time. That's mm -hmm. what I meant. So, uh, so what do you think? Mm -hmm. and very structured. Yeah, yeah very, very, very rigorous. Yeah. You know, probably very related. I relate a lot with jazz musicians and also, yeah. you know, this very strong sense of, of where, the, where are you going. And she has also an aesthetic point of view. So yeah. she says no to things that you think would be allowed in this mm -hmm. thing. Mm -hmm. And she suddenly says that it's not fitting, so you try to understand, and then it's her vision, so at some moment it's difficult to accept yeah. because she says you can do, I mean, there is no way it looks like, and suddenly she says it mm -hmm. looks like something that I want to <laughs> yeah. But I guess it's no more, it's not contradiction, but it's yeah. just... It's a paradox, I think, yeah. yeah. And she's like that, the work is like that, and I think it's an interesting challenge for mm. dancers who already, you know, grew up a bit. Yeah, or even in life. Yes, that's <laughs> true. Even that. that. <laughs> so, what about uh, now? You know, like what is uh, next for you uh, after What's this? Next? Well, I go to Japan to make a piece in uh -huh. two weeks. That's that's nice a moment also. My my activity is mostly in Angers as a director and as an artistic director and, and director of the school. But that's true that this year there are quite lots of. Um, tours or works outside, which is also good, mm -hmm. <laughs> because it's it's feeding feeding the work a lot. So what is really next is that I had a small command from the Japanese um, choreographer Kosei Sakamoto in Kyoto, and uh, we met uh, 10 years ago as I was granted in Kyoto, and he asked me if I would be okay to make a solo for one dancer of her of his, and one dancer of uh, Angers school that was in workshops in his company last year and that he liked very much, that is Aline Landreau. So he proposed something that he called the Monster Project. He did a piece, a solo for those two dancers, the Japanese and uh, the French, and he asked me if I wanted to do my own version on them too and that we would mix and cross the program. <laughs> so it's a kind of dialogue uh, of um, ways of uh, seeing what the monster is. It's mm -hmm. a work with two different dancers and mm -hmm. it's also an imagination dialogue between two authors. Yeah, it's this multi-layered uh, mashup, you know, kind of putting yeah. things together. And I use the term uh, of uh, digital technologies or DJing or VJing that but I think that is, you know, it's very in interesting yes. what is going on because yeah. perhaps we have a mashup quality already yeah, that yeah. we uh, mix and 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 combine more than what we notice yes and you know <laughs> about that you make me think that i am the less technological choreographer in France. <laughs> i hardly cannot i mean i can use now computers and and but you are in my email so yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm in that I'm okay and also in taking pictures and making small things but uh, it's a joke and it's not a joke i was fighting or talking with a, a person who called Armando Menicacci, who is ah, Armando. Armando. Yeah. And I'm always really joking a lot with him because I'm saying, you know, I will never put I will never put any image, video image on my stage. It's I cannot because it takes the power and I'm more in the movement, I'm more artisanal, I'm more and he says, you know, you, you, you're one of the most <laughs> technological in your way of thinking mm -hmm. and editing your own work and your work is yeah. complex and simple like it can be. So he explained yeah. things about my first pieces that he knows very well yeah. and about some others and he told me, you know, this is technological, yeah. but you do it yourself. I mean, you do it without other medium, but yeah. your way of editing, thinking, yeah. and now I'm more convinced. And <laughs> yeah about what it could be or what it yeah. is 
and step by step I think yeah. I, I'll go yeah. towards yeah. the thinking of it. Yeah, one of the things like digital technologies have reflected a lot of how minds work. Yes, yes. And we use the metaphor of digital technologies now to compose work. That's yeah. how I actually think. You know, it's this kind of interesting like loop. Like Lisa Nelson. Did. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like Lisa is, you know, like taking things from understanding the vision systems and video, mm -hmm. and 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 at the same time you understand what is composition. You know. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, last words of uh, you know. I was happy to be in New York. <laughs> <laughs> the last word. Is that I have the feeling Carla Peterson here in the Dance Theatre Workshop organized a talk with other artists, Chase, uh, another young boy with the long hair, later, or I don't know mm -hmm. the names, and three young women. And it was nice to exchange about the context of dance here and in France. And I had the feeling that something is moving because the people need that uh, frames change also that they mm -hmm. they need they feel like exchanging more about process and not only products and i think it's something that we had a few years ago that that was very important so that their kind of solidarity of uh, of work emerges because here it's very hard mm -hmm. and, and if you don't I mean, share that, it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's worse. So I, I had a very good feeling in between St. Mark and here, mm -hmm. meeting some people. Yeah, like organizations and making p uh, partnerships. Yes. That is yes. very, very important. And someone like Carla, mm -hmm. uh, and the connection also with the French uh, Institute, uh, Lili Chopard, I, I feel that there are yeah, nets mm -hmm. that are alive and it's it's very important for us and also for the American artists. Okay. And I feel like going on exchanging with uh, those young Americans. I feel like going on.